An excerpt from eight. 26 hours after I told him. 1,560 minutes since we sat on the stage, gazing out into the auditorium. The emptiness of a room we'd never before been alone in, muting our voices. 93,600 seconds since my, words, since my words had caused the ground to shake and the sky to fall, a fault line to shatter the earth between us. We finally addressed the mile-wide chasm in the room. I had had a day and then some to worry, to doubt, to fear, to be ashamed, to cry, to be sorry, to drown inside a tangled sea of blankets, to refuse food, to choke on the lack of words exchanged, to be sick, to try and fail to imagine what he must have been thinking, what he must have thought of me, this girl who had loved him and deceived him for eight months. The words we offered each other stumbled and faltered, tripped over their own feet, stepped on the hems of their skirts, bruised shins on low tables as they fumbled for a light, clutched at each other in the darkness, maneuvered with a clumsiness painful to watch, until at last I cried out, I wish I were straight. And as he turned to me, I could see myself reflected in his eyes, even from all this distance. Every day in middle school, I wished I were white, he confessed. Sometimes I still do. But I'm not white, and you're not straight, he concluded. And suddenly there was understanding in the way he let his knee rest against mine. And I realized that the gap, the abyss, had not disappeared at all, but that we had been standing on the same side the whole time. Thank you.